Hello everyone, Assalamu Alaikum. Welcome back to Salar Khan YouTube channel. I hope you have subscribed to the channel. If not, just take a second and please give me this favor and subscribe to the channel. The course that we have kicked off with is related to insulation. Electrical insulation. So we'll be talking of high voltage phenomena over here. The prerequisite to this is high voltage engineering. So, just a little random video over here, random talk. Have you ever felt an electric shock, a sensation of electric shock? Yes, definitely you have. Why is that? Why is that? Because you, you, gave, it the, you gave the current the path to flow. Or I could just in simple terms say that you came in contact with a conductor. The thing that saves us from that shock is what? It is the insulation. We have conductors inside this wire or a cable or whatever, but we do not feel the shock or we do not feel the electricity. Why is that? Because of the insulation covering. So insulation is a very, very important subject. It is a very, very important subject that we will we'll discuss together. And I hope I will try to make it, make it uh, uh, comfortable and enjoyable. Right? Yes. Now if I ask you how much of a voltage is dangerous for a human being, or, can, or he can, or he can, you know, uh, uh, resist it or uh, uh, sustain it. Or let me put it in terms of current. How much of a current can a human body uh, sustain? So basically 13 to 14 milliampere. A human being can, have, can uh, take up to a 13 to 14 milliampere of a current. This 14 milliampere of a current is rather dangerous for a human body. Right, but if I tell you, in our laboratory we had a, 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 a rectifier whose conductor was rated at 80 amperes, and the attendant over there would touch it, and he would, you know, uh, ask the students as well that you can touch it and you won't feel anything. 80 amperes of a bare conductor, but he won't feel anything. I didn't touch it, you know, but. They say that you don't feel anything. Why? I'm talking about 14 million pairs of a current is dangerous for a human being. And there I'm talking of an 80 amperes, which we are not feeling it even. So the thing is that there is voltage involved as well. There is voltage involved as well. So the, the, the average resistance of human being, let's say is 100 kilo ohms, 100 kilo ohms is a resistance for a, for a healthy human being. This is the dry resistance and for a healthy human being, which varies from where? Which varies from 80 to 120, I would say, from 60 to 120. Human body resistance, I would write, human body resistance varies from where? R varies from 60 to 120 kilo ohms right this hundred that i've written this is for a healthy human being this is for a dry skin right this i have just written for for easy calculation so if i talk about the voltage level if i talk about the voltage if voltage v is equal to ir from ohm's law i i take it to be 14 milliamperes and i take the resistance to be 100 kilo ohms so i am talking about 1400 volts which is lethal which is lethal and lethal means what that it can kill you instantly right yes this is lethal one other thing the human body resistance is a dynamic resistance the human body resistance it is what it is a dynamic resistance and dynamic resistance in a sense that it decreases when current flows through it. Decreases when current flows through it. 
right yes and this is just a natural phenomena this is like what a current controlled resistor isn't it it is so we talk further if the current flows the resistance further decreases you experience more sensation of that electricity right yes if I talk about the 60 ohms if I talk about the 60 ohms resistance if resistance is 60 kilo ohms this would imply what that the voltage would be equal to 60 multiplied by what the current is let's suppose the same 14 I would take whatever yes let's take 14 so this comes out to be an 840 volts which is again a lethal lethal voltage this I talked in terms of current we talk of what we have a 220 volts so let me do that but we have what we have 220 volts so which means if I talk about the current uh, so V upon R 220 and voltage how much have I taken let's suppose the minimum resistance 60 so this comes out to be 3.7 milliamperes 3.7 milliamperes so have a look now this is quite a very low amount of current I've taken the minimum level of resistance and the voltage that we have so the current that you will experience is what is this much so it's not that they will not even feel it you will feel it but it is not lethal or it is not dangerous you will feel the shock you will feel the shock but it's lethal no it's not lethal Whenever you feel a shock of electricity, there are further steps, you know, if you have a low amount of current, a low amount of volt, the high current high voltage that is lethal, instantaneously fatal, you will die instantaneously. Low amount of current, low amount of voltage, you feel it, number one, you have your reflexes, the reflexes work and you leave it, a sudden pull you, you, you feel a push from that side that is not a push from the current that is a pull from your reflexes step number one if your reflexes are not strong enough the step two is what that you grab that thing the conductor your muscles weaken your muscles weaken and they further grab the conductor more they further grab the conductor more and I said the human skin, human body is a current control resistor. The current flows, the resistance further decreases, the muscle current further flows, the muscles further weaken and the grip becomes strong and strong and you can die out of that. After muscle weakening, step number three is what? Step number three is uh, uh, the, muscle, the muscles would paralyze you whole time, right? The step number three is you feel suffocation suffocation and thirsty and that is step number three you may die over here and the final step step number four after suffocation it reaches your heart the and and you may experience a heart attack or whatever it is in medical terms whatever it may be but the the last step is for the heart and you die out of that fine number one reflexes number two muscle weakness muscle paralysis number three suffocation number four heart death right yes so you talk about any electrical equipment we have to talk about electrical insulation this is the importance of the course fine yes now to finish the previous video I asked you a question if I am a layman and I have, I have give, I found a, this sample of material somewhere and and what I and I ask you what material is this so is this a conductor is it an insulator what is your answer to this this is an insulator 
right yes and how do you tell me you don't tell me this is plastic so this is insulator i may not know what plastic is the other one would say this is pvc so this is insulator i don't know what is pvc the basic the very basic that a layman knows that i will know over here is that this is not a metal so this is an insulator why because on even a layman knows that all metals are conductors all metals are conductors on the other side you have non metals so non metals are insulators on non metals are insulators fine yes so this would just be a preliminary examination you could say and the next we will further see how to differentiate between a conductor and insulator that we'll see when the time comes fine yes sir one other thing we also have one other thing one is a conductor one is an insulator in between there is one other thing that is called the semiconductor germanium silicon so that has its importance in electronics you would see it over there in the periodic table to the left you have what you have metals sodium is a metal sodium is a conductor to the right hand side we have non metals we have insulators chlorine fluorine sf6 you would see so non metals are insulators in the middle of the periodic table silicon germanium you've got what they are the semiconductors we don't have any terminology like the semi insulators i don't know why right yes so any material can be classified into what can be classified into a conductor and a, a semiconductor i would just put it over here a semiconductor and then finally i would write an insulator now in insulator we have two things not the topic of today but let's say we we see it a little so the first is a simple insulator and the second is a dielectric dielectric basically basically the function of the two is the same what is the basic function of an insulation is to isolate voltages you've got two different voltages you have to isolate them you provide an insulation between the two in insulations then we have got two classes you could say or or just two uh, interchangeably used words terminologies number one is insulator number two is dielectric what does the dielectric do dielectric whenever we talk about capacitance whenever we talk about energy store or charge storage that is dielectric i will write i will write insulation in capacitor this is what this would be dielectric where we have what we have polarization due to what due to dipole orientation we've got dipoles we get dipole orientation and this is called what this is called polarization and this is in the case of what is in the case of dielectrics what do they do they store charge they store charge store charge where in its electric field and that electric field is e is equal to half cv squared when a voltage is applied and it has a certain capacitance it stores energy in the form of its electric field right yes whereas a simple insulator does not store charge no storage it provides only isolation so isolation is provided by dielectric as well but it provides storage the insulator do not provide storage for example the pvc for example the pvc pvc is a very commonly used so pvc is what these are basically long chain hydrocarbons which have no polarization and 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 hence no storage of charge 
right yes yeah. so we'll see this uh, basically uh, when we talk about it further but this just came over here so let i thought let's say we talk about it conductor insulator the main thing is conductor and insulator so you've got good conductors you've got bad conductors how to differentiate between them so the property of that differentiation is what it is resistance the property is resistance now for a conductor the resistance the lower the resistance the good the conductor it is platinum platinum is the best conductor platinum is the best conductor you use aluminum conductors nowadays acsr aluminum control uh, uh, aluminum what steel reinforced acsr although copper conductors are not nowadays used but we still say copper losses right so this is just semantically coming uh, uh, copper losses right although you don't use copper conductors similarly resistance is low it's a good conductor for insulator the resistance the higher the resistance the great insulator it is over here we talk about 0 0.01 ohms 0 0.001 ohms 0 0.001 ohms the lower the resistance the good it is over here we talk about mega ohms giga ohms the higher the resistance the good it is now i said non-metal so that non-metal may be a solid PVC or mica or wood or whatever it may be a liquid transformer oil it may be a gas SF6 over here it only must be a metal over there it could be a non-metal it could be a solid it could be a liquid it could be a gas fine yes so i think the video uh, will get a little lengthy if i further talk about it i finished this video over here i will see you in the next one very soon till here you should know it we talk about it further in the next video till then goodbye